Hello Vinyl Community. Uh, I'm going to cover a gear related video. I'm not talking to any specific records here so you know if you're not interested in the gear discussion you can turn this video off now. I'm not going to cover it. Um, but this is in response to a conversation that I've been having offline with Chris about a video that Michael Fremer uh, had just posted. So, for those of you that are not aware, Michael Fremer is a vinyl enthusiast and he writes for Stereophile magazine and he used to write for The Absolute Sound and, you know, if there is a ambassador or a promoter of vinyl, it is definitely Michael Fremer. Uh, I've been following him ever since I got back into vinyl and uh, he's had quite the interesting history um, so I do recommend checking out his channel and website Analog Planet uh, they're a fantastic resource for you know uh, getting the scoop on analog uh, uh, recordings or taking a look at gear or getting the latest news on pressing plants uh, he really has the inside scoop but to get to the the core subject here uh, he just recently posted two videos the first video was really useful to me where he compared his continuum caliber table to that of the new techniques SL 1200 G and uh, the continuum caliber is really one of the ultimate reference turntables uh, you know it has a six-figure price tag um, so one of my funnel fundamental assumptions here is that hey if you're spending six figures on a turntable all pieces and parts of that turntable better be damn accurate and he also has a high price tone arm uh, done by Swedish analog technology or SAT uh, on the turntable and so he plays a record, a, a percussion-based record, and he compares it to the new Techniques SL1200G, which is a $4,000 turntable. And I have always been interested in, you know, hearing it, this type of comparison. So how does a six-figure turntable fare against a 4000 turntable or vice versa? and the results were very interesting so if you watch his video which I'm kinda of showing you here uh, he mentions that hey I might switch the audio with the video feed and he doesn't tell people what he did he just kinda of leaves it to uh, the viewers to you know put in a comment what they think did he switch video did he switch the audio on the video or not and so when he first posted this, um, I grabbed the video and uh, I looked at the data myself. So uh, going into my data review, there were four things that you know I made an assumption on. So again, this relates to his caliber. A six-figure turntable better have number one superior isolation. And I know he's spent a lot of money on you know isolation of the turntable. So you're not getting the external vibrations coming through the system. Uh, number two, the tone arm, which I just mentioned, is going to be superior. And, you know, if you go to the SAT website, uh, I would have to say yes, uh, because they really did some serious engineering behind this tone arm. And, you know, they're using uh, composite materials and they're looking at, you know, the actual layup. Of the tone arm so that tone arm is made of individual layers and uh, since I come from an engineering background uh, they're using finite element analysis to look at uh, stresses in the overall tone arm structure they're also looking at resonance so using finite uh, element analysis you can really take a look at your structure in detail and look at that complex problem so you know you're looking at harmonics hey when am I going to excite this guy in terms of when it's playing a record so there was a lot of thought that went behind this tone arm now if you compare that to the techniques they are basically using the same form and function as the the older techniques except they're using a magnesium alloy so 
it's not going to be as good as the SAT arm. It's going to get excited at, you know, different frequencies, of course, but how is it going to be able to control uh, that with respect to the music it is playing? And you're going to see that here. Uh, next, uh, I made the assumption that the wiring within the tone arm is going to be superior. Uh, a lot of the high priced tone arms use what's called Litz conductors, so I'm assuming that the SAT arm is using a Litz conductor. Um, lastly, uh, the speed control. So here I'm showing you in a photo the continuum has a huge box which controls the speed of the platter. Now that's not to say that Techniques doesn't have its own speed control. It does. It has a microprocessor, but you know, it again, if you're sp spending six figures on a turntable, that speed better be damn accurate. So uh, again, I grabbed the video and the first thing I want to do is, you know, listen to it myself. I mean, can I hear the difference? And even without what I'm about to show you, when you did one on one, the first video and then the second video, the, the differences should be clear to everyone. They were to everyone that commented. And so here is just a take of, you know, eight second samples of each one. Now, uh, to say it up front, you know, Everybody came to the same conclusion that the video that was matched with the techniques is actually from the Caliburn and vice versa. When you see the Caliburn, you're hearing the audio from the techniques. So here is my splice of the two, two, turn, two turntables together. So, um, did you hear a difference? Now let's talk about what I see when I look at the data. So, you know, when I get uh, a new piece of gear nowadays, I want to see, am I truly hearing a difference or not? Is this a placebo effect or not? And I will take the audio and I will port it into Audacity and take a look at it. Can I see a change against my baseline? And yes, you can. So let's talk the data. Okay, uh, the first thing that I want to show you here is uh, three different uh, wave files. The bottom one is really what's coming from the video, and I just wanted to compare the three files together just to confirm because the first one is labeled as te techniques, but it's not. And let's get into the reason why and you can see that the curves are pretty similar for the first and the third videos so I'm going to take this one off and I'm just going to expand these windows here so we can see things in greater detail just tweak it a little bit more here okay now uh, you can see that you know at a high level everything looks the same but when we get closer in things look different so look here, um, there is a much, much better response in these curves than that curve down below, the second one. So let me zoom out, let's take a look at this transient section. So you can see the peaks here are different. Um, so the transient response is much, much better on the Caliburn, just as I would expect it to be. And you can also see, hey, the, the Caliburn or the SAT arm is picking up a lot more detail. 
Now, let's look at this end section. This is one of the things that was most apparent to me. The Techniques runs just a hair faster. So we're like, we're talking a hundredth or two hundredths of a second uh, in um, speed difference between the caliper and the Techniques. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. There's, uh, yeah, let me see, what do I want to do here? Um, Let's move over to another section here. I'm going to zoom out. And let's look at the wave dB. So this is sound pressure uh, as a waveform. And let's grab this quieter section of the song and zoom in. Here too you can see a big difference. Uh, again, this is, you know, uh, the ch actually the change in the sound stage that you're hearing. Uh, with the piano in this particular track. So, uh, of course, the SAT arm and the, the turntable itself for the Caliburn is much better. And uh, for the, the techniques, uh, this is what I call a little more smearing of the audio. So let's go in and let's look at some of these more uh, dynamic sections. And here, again, uh, you can see a difference. Now, Orally, you know, yeah, everyone can hear a difference here. Is it a huge difference? Well, it's it's really hard to say. All right, now let's take a look at the spectrum. So uh, I'm changing to the the spectrum file for the most part when you're scoped out at a high level, not much. But look up here at the top, in the the 20 kilohertz range, you're seeing something here. Uh, I couldn't hear it auditorily. Uh, but uh, what I want to do next is kind of zoom in and let's let's take a look at more detail here. So here I am zoomed in. I'm going from 23 hertz to 1 kilohertz instead of 22 kilohertz. And look at down here. In the lower regions, you are seeing uh, more response from the caliber than you are from the techniques. And that is some of the difference that we're hearing in the, the sound early. A couple days later, after he posted this initial one, he did another uh, recording, so to speak, of just a vocal track with a little bit of piano. This one was a little more interesting, and he basically, you know, gave the answer key to the textbook on this one. So Chris made the comment that he couldn't hear a difference. Um, can you hear a difference on this one? So here is my eight second splice of the two turntables. And again, the audio was not changed on this one. Let me know what you think. <laughs> So, could you hear a difference? I personally, I could not hear a difference. So, just like I did before, I took the audio files, I pulled them into Audacity, and I looked at uh, the waveforms, and I also looked at uh, the, the spectrogram. So, here's what I'm seeing. Okay, so here are the two files that have been pulled in, the top one being the caliber and the bottom the techniques. And I'm going to zoom in and from a scale out it looks the same, right? So let's scale in a bit and towards the beginning of the song and you can see that, yeah, again, we're seeing some differences in the waveforms here. Um, now, let me scale back a bit. And let's go to one of the 
areas of interest here. Let's go to this part here. Now, for the most part, they're the same. There's a little bit of changes uh, in the peaks here, um, which is, you know, it, it's minor, but it is something. And then here, uh, there's a pretty dramatic, well, I shouldn't say dramatic, but there is a difference, a notable difference. Let's take a look at the spectrum now. So, this is uh, 23 hertz uh, all the way up to uh, 22 kilohertz. And really, when I looked at it, I did not see too much of a difference here. It looks like all the, the frequencies are being covered. And, you know, I think that's probably one of the reasons why I cannot hear a dramatic difference between the two tracks at all. Uh, but there are some other things that we can uh, definitely look at here. I'm just uh, scaling things out a little bit. Again, nothing really noteworthy, but let's uh, let's take a look at the the waveform dB here. So when I look at the waveform dB again, uh, you know when I I scope things out, you know there are some minor differences, but for the most part everything uh, looks the same. And uh, I do want to uh, zoom this in a little bit so we can see. Uh, at a, uh, a finer detail what's going on here. So much like uh, we saw in the percu percussion track there are uh, differences uh, but you know again I had a hard time perceiving them I'm really curious if you heard anything. Now why you could tell which was which again uh, you look at it and you, the uh, techniques runs fast and you can see that here and so I had to do some chopping at the beginning of the song to get things to line up. But you can see already in the shortened section, hey, it's uh, the Caliburn uh, is taking longer to get to a certain point. And I'm assuming that the Caliburn is dead accurate. So what are my takeaways here? Did David slay Goliath? Um, no, but it was a damn good battle. <laughs> um, so... Overall, I thought this was a wonderful thing that he did to compare his reference to the techniques. And, you know, I'd like to try and acquire some of those records so I can try this little test on my own table to see how it compares to his continuum. Uh, but overall, uh, I don't think, like, the tone arm wiring made much of a difference. It might have, but I think the biggest difference here was the mechanical difference. I think the tone arm and the table itself played into the overall responses that we are hearing and it'd be interesting if you could take the techniques and fit the SAT tone arm to see how much of a change that would make um, but overall I think that you know in terms of the the tone arm and the table itself the caliber uh, you're seeing a much finer response now there are certain things that the techniques could not draw out of the music, but you know when you're playing certain records, um, the differences are really not that discernible. At least it wasn't to me. I don't know if it was to you. Um, but anyway, it was fun. Uh, what did you guys think? Did I get something absolutely wrong? Uh, Fremer did not post the results to the, the first video. He said he was going to tell everybody what it was, so who knows, maybe I totally screwed up here, but at least from the data, I can see what he has labeled as the techniques is actually the Caliburn, and then for the video, again, he swapped the audio. So, uh, if I did get something wrong, if uh, I'm looking at something from a totally wrong perspective, shoot me a comment down below, let me know what you thought, and thank you for watching.